Hey guys, this video is going to be dedicated to giving a very condensed summary of what the cross product is and what the dot product is through an example. I'm not going to be covering um, proofs, I'm just going to be covering a very, very simple example. So let's get started with a cross product. What is it? Well, a cross product can be written like this. We can have, the, we can have vector A crossed with vector B. One thing we need to know about cross products is it only occurs when vectors are in R3. That means they only have three dimensions. So for example, A could be a three-dimensional vector or has to be a three-dimensional vector. And for example, it could be 1, 0, and 2, right? Um, likewise, B, our vector B, has to be a three-dimensional vector. And it could be anything. It could be, I don't know, let's make it 1, 2, and 3. Quite simple. Well, the first thing we need to know about dot products is that they're equal to a determinant. So let's write that down below. We know A cross B cross B is equal to is equal to the determinant. By the way, if you don't know what a determinant it is, that's totally fine. I'm going to be showing you how to evaluate this. It'll be the determinant of I, J, and K. These are your unit vectors in your first row. And in your second row, you'll be dealing with vector A written across horizontally. So it'll be 1, 0, and 2. And in the last row, you'll be dealing with 1, 2, and 3. So it's a 3 by 3 determinant. Now, in case you've forgotten or perhaps never knew how to solve a determinant, let me show you how you calculate this type of thing. Once again, I'm not going to go through a proof. I'm just going to show you how to calculate a determinant, which I think is the easiest way. First of all, you get your top left element, which is your unit vector i, and you multiply that by the two diagonals here. So just imagine you get an imaginary line and you draw this through the first column and then imagine you get another imaginary line and you draw that through your first row. Notice there are four numbers left. You get the multiplication of their diagonals and take the difference of them. So this is what you do. You get 0 and you times it by 3. You get 0 and you times it by 3 and then you subtract that from you subtract that from 2 times by 2. 2 times by 2. I hope that makes sense. Then what we do is we analyze the next one in line, which is going to be j. So you get minus j. It goes in and out of plus and minus, by the way. So it was positive i, then it's minus j, and next it's going to be positive k. So we're left with minus j. Imagine drawing a vertical line through here and a horizontal line through here. And then we just get the multiplication of the diagonals again, which is going to be 1 times by 3 times by 3. And we're going to be subtracting that from, so these, these two multiplied, we're going to be subtracting it from 2 times by 1. Minus 2 times by 1, right? Then what we're going to do is we're going to add that to our k unit vector. So let's get rid of this and focus on the next one. Let's, we're going to be adding that to our k unit vector times by the two diagonals here, which is going to be 1 times by 2 minus 0 times by 1. Let me write that out. It's going to be 1 times by 2, let me see if I've got enough space here, minus 0 times by 1, minus, oops, minus 0 times by 1 times by 1. I hope I got enough space. That 2 should be in green. That 2 should be in green just here. Cool. Okay, now let's analyze what this is. Well, the stuff in this bracket is just going to be equal to 0 minus 4. So that's just going to be minus 4. What about the stuff in this bracket? This is going to be 3 minus 2, which is 1. Likewise, the stuff in this bracket will be equal to 2 minus 0, which is just 2. So if we if we re-express this, keeping in mind that some are negative, we'll be left with i times by minus 4 minus j times by 1, if you like, plus k times by 2, times by 2. And of course, we can re-express this as another vector. So let me just rewrite this in orange. This is another way you can express what's just written is minus 4, minus 1, 2. That is your cross product. This is going to be A cross B. That is going to be a very simple example of how you solve the cross product. A minor note while I'm talking about cross products, this cross product will always be orthogonal to both the vectors A and vector B. Right? That's the way it's been defined. This vector, it's not a scalar, this vector will be orthogonal to both A and B. Okay, now that we've got the cross product sorted, let's quickly summarize the dot product. 
So let's talk about this. Let's talk about the dot product. A thing to know about the dot product is, is it's not limited to only three um, dimensional vectors. It could be any dimensional vector. But in, the, in this particular example, I'm going to be dealing with a dot b, just for simplicity's sake. So let's do this. We know this is going to be equal to, let's sub it in, a is going to be 1, 0, 2, and b is going to be equal to 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, too easy. 1, 2, 3. Okay, well, the way you solve this is you simply just sum up the multiplication of each of their rows. So it's going to be 1 times by 1, that's the first row multiplied, and then we're going to be adding that to 0 times by 2, 0 times by 2, and then we're going to be adding that to 2 times by 3. And uh, let's see if how good my algebra is. This is going to be 1 plus 0 plus 6, which is just going to be equal to 7. This, notice this is a dot b. And another thing you should notice is that this is a scalar. It's not a vector like our cross product was, right? Um, so this is, the ma this is how you calculate cross products, and this is how you evaluate dot products. I hope that makes sense. Before I end this video, I just want to talk about how this actually applies to physical things. In physics, we end up using the dot products and cross product quite a bit. For example, torque is going to be equal to our um, distance, uh, sorry, displacement vector cross product with our force vector. And I'll be going into more detail about this in future videos, but this is one particular case where the cross product actually has some practical application. I hope that makes sense.